are at the Tea Table, the show's classic discussion segment where we share our long-form thoughts on a specific subject, and this week we've got a big subject on our hands. How should Nintendo handle the Virtual Console? And even just the general idea of re-releasing their back catalog on Nintendo Switch. How should they do it? Does anyone want to start us off? So, the absolute number one thing is... Uh, if you're going to sell to families, and if this thing's going to be portable, you're probably going to want people to be able to buy more than one Switch, and you're probably going to want them to be able to install their games on yeah. more than one Switch. Mm. So yeah. allow us to have some kind of family account or something where we can share virtual console games with our family members. That's I am 100% with you. Another thing I think they need to make really immediately and really, really loudly clear, they need to push VC sort of to the front of... Nintendo Switch's identity as a product. They need to send the clear message that this system is for all Nintendo games, not just Switch games. Yeah. And to do that, they need to hit it out of the gate by having every virtual console game that's currently available on Wii U and 3DS available on the Switch on day one. Yep. And they need to let current owners transfer their purchases up from 3DS and from Wii U uh, and ideally save data too if possible because that would really help with consumer loyalty um, but they need to be able to transfer all of those purchases up to the Nintendo Switch for free they need this consumer loyalty these are basic programs that all of the other companies have done at this point and Nintendo's back catalog is their greatest resource yeah. they are the ones who have the most to benefit from this model from this plan this way of interacting with their consumers and they have the most to lose by doing that wrong and yeah. I don't want to see them keep doing it wrong. Yeah. And I'd say, at the very least, they should be carrying over NES, Super Nintendo, and Game Boy Advance. Very least. And Nintendo 64. I disagree, but we can discuss that later. Okay. Yeah, so Colin, your, your little opening rant there is exactly what I had written down as well. <laughs> Just, like, they, it's it's pivotal that, pivotal that they uh, they base this on accounts, not piece of hardware. If yeah. you have a Nintendo a Nintendo account, uh, ugh, if you have a Nintendo account that you've bought something digitally on, you need to be able to transfer that to Switch. Like that's that's just going to be crucial. Um, and so one thing I've been kind of thinking about uh, the Pokemon Company. I don't remember which person it was exactly. Uh, maybe Junichi Masuda said that they weren't actively considering releasing gold, silver, and crystal on virtual console like they did red, blue, and yellow. <laughs> uh, so what I would like to see happen is, inevitably at some point, Pokemon Go is going to do an update that adds in Gen 2, and I think Nintendo should time the virtual console release of Gen 2 at the exact same time and capitalize on that hype, or maybe like oh, a week later. That's a great idea. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I mean, okay. we saw after Pokemon Go launched, uh, Pokemon 3DS sales spiked, yeah. and actual 3DS hardware sales spiked as well. So I think if you launch uh, Gold, Silver, and Crystal on Nintendo Switch right after Pokemon Go gets a Gen 2 update, you're going to get a lot of people interested in that system. Yeah, yep. nice. So I know we're not in Dreamland anymore, but if we want to take it even further, they could make Pokemon Go also a good game. <laughs> <laughs> That is Dreamland. Um, so uh, another another sort of dream scenario of mine is GameCube games on Virtual Console. Yes! Yep. Yeah, and use the GameCube um, adapter for yeah. all Virtual Console games, not just GameCube. Absolutely. Because they need to use that product. It's a great product. I'm sure they're going to keep making it. The GameCube controller is amazing, and it works great for stuff like Ocarina of Time anyway, so being able to use it on your back catalog would be really cool. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of thinking about GameCube games they could possibly remake, but and they've done a few, you know, like Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, but for the most part, I think a lot of those games would, would be fine just getting re-released as a $15, $20 virtual console experience. Yeah, I... And not only that, but uh, Alex was mentioning that Nintendo has a lot of games in their back catalog that they can just pull out on cartridges and release ah. them for the Switch. Yeah. Mm. And release them as sort of like classic edition type things. The gaming market is getting to a point where people are really more interested in the games I think they're playing than the fact that they're the newest thing. If you look at stuff like the Steam storefront, stuff like Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is placed alongside stuff like Firewatch and Overwatch, and stuff like, you know, Alex Kidd Remake Mastered. There are all these weird kinds of wacky styles and ages of games available on digital storefronts these days, and I think that the success of those kinds of storefronts can actually carry over into the physical world. I think that they sort of need to look at the trends on 
the digital play space and and make the connection that this is just the way that people are changing how they play games now. We're, we don't need to distinguish what's going on with digital re-releases re and physical releases. People just want these games. Yep. And so a lot of GameCube games, I think, are prime contenders, like you said, Ben, not only to get re-released for $15 on the virtual console, but to be put out for $15 at retail. Yeah. Like, how cool would it be to see Mario Kart Switch and then right next to it on the shelf you get Mario Kart Double Dash, like, with a little red banner across it. Like, yeah. they can do that with Melee, that's how they bring that back, and maybe even give it some sort of online connectivity. Like, there's so much potential, I think, for just porting these games over and calling them Switch games. Yeah. And we're even seeing uh, GameStop is now supporting some indie games. They're, they're selling physical indie games in their stores and working with developers yeah. to bring more there. So the idea of selling a $10, $15 game in-store isn't that bizarre. It's, it's really happening already. Absolutely, and I think that they can make some sort of nice interface presentation in, like, so So, say they release GameCube games on NX cartridges, for example, or NS cartridges. Say they make GameCube games available on NS cartridges. Uh, they can have some sort of, like, a cute little border around the widescreen like they would have on the Game Boy Player, the Super Game Boy, and stuff like that. Um, or when you would play the N64 transfer pack for, you know, playing Pokemon in Pokemon Stadium. Um, cute little borders and stuff like that to make it clear that this is a little bit of a throwback, like you're not getting a perfectly new game, but mm -hmm. there's it's charming, it's something you still want, it's a nice experience nonetheless, and there's no reason that a game's 10 year age should preclude you from enjoying it in like a modern presentational way, you don't need all these ugly black boxes around the screen and stuff. Yep. Um, and sort of the unspoken thing is people love owning games on cartridges. And these aren't yeah. technically cartridges, but they're close enough that I think people will, will sort of, they'll feel the same way to people. And on top yep. of that, um, it's been like 10 years since Nintendo's reissued, like, for example, NES games uh, in a physical form where they have mm -hmm. the old uh, box art logo stuff on the front of the box. Like, that's one problem I had with the Virtual Console was it was always the title screens of the games were the icons for the games when really it should be oh. the, the, the covers of the games. That's Yeah, it should. That's yeah. what people remember having on, them, are there, on their shelves. So Yeah, you're really right about that. Like, this, it's a really um, good opportunity, especially coming on the heels of the NES Classic edition just to to reignite people's love for owning and uh having these games on their shelves yeah i completely agree with that um one of the hurdles i see in that kind of a situation is they can't really release a game like super mario brothers on an ns cart alone like they're gonna need to do something like the super mario bros collection yeah i agree in order for physical carts like those to do well and the problem there is, you know, it would be so cool to have a physical Switch collection of Super Mario Bros, Super Mario yeah. Bros 3, Mario World, Mario 64, Mario Land even could be cool. But if, you know, those are all wrapped up into one collection cart, then that's what's on your shelf. You got yeah, the All-Stars right. 2, not Super Mario and Mario 3 and Mario 64. Yeah. So I hope they can find some way to skirt that line really well because... Those are both really fantastic scenarios, but they kind of conflict with each other a little bit. Well, it's hard to say because it was just it was just 10 years ago that Nintendo was releasing just raw NES classics on the Game Boy Advance, and it was just a, a standalone right, game. Right, and that didn't do package. well at all, though, they did, right? They did fine. Did they? Given okay. that they were very low budget. And these things don't need to how sell much, a ton. How much did they cost? I don't remember uh, that. I think it was like 20 bucks, maybe, really? maybe okay. less. I thought they cost full retail price. I don't think so. But my memory was probably like they a weren't lot like super yours. big system sellers. They didn't sell like a million copies each, but they sold like modestly well, like like two hundred thousand okay. copies, two hundred fifty thousand, okay. which is pretty good for a just a basically okay. just a loyalty budget release. Yeah, I, I guess you and I might see this a little differently. As I think they can use that sort of nostalgia and that the power of the the retail space of old games to, in part, fuel the excitement for Switch and fuel people's willingness to buy the console and engage with Nintendo's new sort of presence in pop culture. Whereas, if it is just something that they just want to, you know, put out and fill retail space with for whoever wants to buy it, then that, yeah, that can work totally fine. Yeah. So, I think another way Nintendo can really leverage their vast library of classic games, like you were saying, 
uh, is by emulating PlayStation Now and offering a Nintendo oh. Classics streaming service. They can even call it Nintendo Classics or something along those lines where you pay... They gotta call it... What was that 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 radio system in Japan where you could play certain games at certain times? Oh, broadcast to television? Th- it would be a throwback to that. That would be really cool. <laughs> yeah, so something can you pay, I, I don't know, $10, $15 a month for access to a, an ever-growing library of Nintendo Classic games. And then maybe mm-hmm. as an added incentive, uh, anytime you buy digitally, you get a discount on a game. Or maybe anytime yep. you buy digitally, uh, you get it. You can download it a day early. Nintendo will do a digital release a little early for their subscribers. Nice. Yeah, and they, yep. I think they need to do lots of promotions for retro titles mm-hmm. in their digital storefronts anyway, like um, on the eShop. And if they do this physical release sort of program, I think there's good potential there. But mostly, I think they need to be distributing their digital content and their back catalog a lot more generously because these games are old and and their best purpose now is to use them to exhibit to people what Nintendo is because they're the best games on the planet and they are at this point unfortunately not worth very much to many consumers. The value of games has gone way down and whether that's fair or not is a whole other discussion but the point is digitally people expect to pay very little money for games. I think Nintendo has a great opportunity then not to say well we should just sell these games for eight dollars anyway because that's what they're worth they can then they can say we'll use these in a different way we won't be giving them to people in exchange for money we'll be giving them to people in exchange for their interest and their loyalty in our brand and their willingness and dedication to buying things repeatedly so you know if you want to say to a nine-year-old hey if you buy a samus amiibo and scan it on your nintendo switch you get super metroid there you go yeah I also like the idea, this is sort of similar, where you buy a Mario game for Switch and a brand new one, and you get a Mario virtual console game of your choice. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like, do you guys remember when they had that launch event for, or not launch event, but like the digital release sort of schedule of the three Donkey Kong Country games on yeah, Wii U? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Those are the kinds of promotions that, that make stuff like Tropical Freeze, like, they can, they can really fuse together their current game plan and their retro catalog to synergize I hate that word, but to synergize with each other and each help the other sell better um, and drive more interest that way. And they can do stuff like uh, if they have physical cartridges like a Donkey Kong Country collection could be really cool to re-release alongside like a new Donkey Kong Country game and or you know pre-order bonuses for new games like oh there's so many I don't know about ways. pre-order bonuses but uh, I think more like remix titles t- uh, like NES remix but done a little better and they're timed out in releases like those Donkey Kong Country uh, games were so like SNES remix maybe N64 remix or maybe just like retro Mario remix and they yeah. remix a bunch of stuff from Mario games in cool ways. I think there's lots of little like collections and groups of ideas of kinds of games that they can organize into a lot of different of these remix titles. Um, flash sales drastically improved my Nintendo program because the one they have is garbage. Just lots of stuff to sort of drive consumer loyalty and give people your back catalog of games so that they know what to fall in love with when they're falling in love with Nintendo. Yeah. So I said uh, I said earlier that I don't think N64 should come over to, over to Virtual Console, and I want to sort of clarify why that is. The main reason is because I think the Nintendo 64 control experience is sometimes good, but generally pretty miserable on Nintendo's modern controllers. Hmm. And I think they have a unique opportunity to pick the very sort of... They haven't been offering that many on N64 Virtual Console anyway. So take the very few that people really love and just remaster them outright. That's a good idea. Because the graphics could be so much better. They could be widescreen. They could have better controls. uh, At least camera controls in particular. Because the C buttons are just miserable to try to use on a modern controller. Or to try to map to a modern controller. Uh, So Mario 64 is good. Uh, The Zelda games would be good. Uh, Maybe Wave Race or some other games in sort of that that category. Yeah, Wave Race is is great. Wave Race is a, is a prime contender for a collection where they package a couple of games mm-hmm. and and put it on one cart and then tell you, hey, here's Wave Race. Yep. Play it. Yep. Because um, apparently Blue Storm on the GameCube was an amazing title. Um, and I remember I never could figure out it, Wave Race on the 64, but I remember like my cousin loved it, and I remember hearing some stories of other people who like had a great time playing Wave Race, so... 
I feel like that's one of Nintendo's IP that can be used to to attract, I don't want to say a blue ocean because it's not so much for mass market gamers, but certainly a different kind of gamer than has been paying attention to the Wii and Wii U. Well, it's a, it's a sort of a sports game that they haven't really been making a lot of. <laughs> Their In own a way, sports yeah. games. But I, I think the crowds that, that follow the, the biggest sports games like Madden, NBA, and FIFA, I and this is just in my experience, I haven't noticed them tending to follow the more chill I guess sports mm -hmm. like wave racing and pilot wings I guess kind of falls into this category but um, other stuff like stunt race games like um, uh, Excite Truck and Excite Bots, like those kinds of things are really cool. It's a different kind of sports fan. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Like extreme sports almost, but in a very gamey way. And it's really just N64. It's not GameCube, because GameCube games tend to be pretty easy to just modernize by making them look okay in HD and the controls can stay the yeah. same. Like, it's N64 is sort of a black sheep in terms of bringing it into the modern era. I was gonna say, that's absolutely true because stuff like, even, even stuff like PlayStation can look okay not some games, but but many. Um, but really, the Super Nintendo, the Game Boy Advance, those are the kinds of games that still look pretty good in like an HD sort of setting, right? Um, because of the way their art was designed. But Nintendo 64 was just this awkward transitional period. Like GameCubes look a little bit outdated, but N64 games really look like they 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 don't belong yeah, right. much elsewhere besides the N64 generation. Um, so they are really prime contenders for remasters. Right. And we've seen with Ocarina of Time 3D and Star Fox 64 3D that they can be oh, modernized, yeah, absolutely. And, it, and it still feels, not, I wouldn't say authentic, but but it, the game doesn't have to change very much. It just has to be modernized. Yeah, and I, I, in general, I think that's something that Nintendo is a lot less privy to doing than they should be. Like, taking the example of Mario 64 still, I was thinking really recently, what, like, they remade this game so soon after it came out on the Nintendo 64 yeah. for DS. Right. They made the same game a really different experience. It was really different visually. So many of their games are such classic, such pure experiences um, that I'm surprised they don't redesign them in those little ways more and make them available for more consoles more often. Right. Like, I'm surprised nothing's happened. I cannot believe there's no Mario Galaxy HD. Right. It's just, it's amazing. And, a lot, it, and, in, and N64 games are different than a lot of Nintendo's other games that are kind of on weird hardware in that nothing really about the games requires them to be on weird hardware. They just were on kind of weird hardware. Yeah, it's not like the S games where they have to like most. A lot of them have to be played with a touchscreen and be really kind of. They'd be a totally different game if you tried to make them without a touchscreen. Yeah, but N sixty four, it's just a weird button layout that can be fixed. Yep. Well, I think that about does it. It sounds like, unless anyone's got some final last thoughts. Metroid Prime Trilogy remastered. Yes, please. Oh God, yes. Oh God, <laughs> yes. All all control schemes, please. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh man, I I need motion control for that. I don't think I could do it on a Switch controller. Well, I mean, they could have Classic Prime, they could have Dual Analog, and they could have Motion. Do it all. Hello, everybody. Thank you for listening to this Nintendo Week clip NWC. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more highlights and discussion videos from Nintendo Week podcast, or subscribe to us on iTunes for weekly breakdowns of all your Nintendo news, discussion segments on subjects, games, and more, and tons of other features. Thanks for listening, and we will see you tomorrow with another NWC.